I see a lot of political symbols on, on shirts. It seems like kids are encouraged to be kind of mini activists, which is, is not how I grew up, but that's how kids are. But if you're a conservative activist, then you're kind of a hater. That's how the dominant culture sees you. Why did you want to kind of pick this fight, which is pretty brave to do at most probably public schools in the country? Thank you. Um, I chose to pick this particular battle because I ended up at the beginning of the first semester getting an internship with Devin Nunes and David Valadeo um, during their midterms. And that's when I really discovered my true passion for politics. And I realized that the school systems seem to be trapped under the government's thumb about what they're supposed to, you know, teach what's acceptable, what's acceptable to force down our throats in a sense. And um, I realized that it's not always the truth. So I chose that as a conservative, raised in a family that my family was made through adoption. So I was born into the pro-life army. And um, I just decided that I felt like someone needed to take a stand. Someone needed to stand up, not just for Clovis North, not just for Clovis Unified, but nationwide for the conservative and Christianity um, monitoring that's going on on campuses. Okay, so there's a, a federal judge actually said, or a judge, I'm not sure a federal judge, said the following, we'll put it up on screen, about MAGA hats. Well, the hat is something that could invoke violence or invoke controversy. Then for the safety of the students, the school is within its legal rights. A former federal district court judge, Oliver Wagner, said that. Um, so your, your yes. hat could provoke people to violence, so I imagine that gets thrown on the list of reasons why this hat, and they claim it's not political, actually, but this hat is a problem. Yeah, actually that, until the judge said it, had never been brought to my attention. Wow. Are you going to keep wearing the hat? Yeah. I haven't been, just because I know that it's a big issue right now. But I did order a black one and I intend to try and wear it on campus because black is one of our school colors. I'm going to try put, it. May, maybe you In do fact, an acronym. Today. Yeah, maybe just, a, oh, the MAGA. You can't say MAGA either. I don't know. Maybe you have a silhouette of Trump. Yeah. I don't know what In fact, you're going to have today I went to, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, today I went in to school and I had, I guarantee I'm the only student, but I had to get my, um, support the blue sweatshirt approved. Yeah. I have to get all of my sweatshirts and shirts approved through You're the disciplinary maker. office before Maddie, I can actually Maddie, wear them. You look pretty, you what look can pretty I say? Yeah. Can we just stop with something? Just collectively as a species, can we just stop? And particularly uh, for wealthy white liberals, can you stop screeching about the hats? Okay. If I were to wear a hat, a MAGA hat, and you start screeching, you are not my problem, okay? Your reaction to what I wear is not my concern. It is not something that I need to deal with, okay? So it, I, I get it, tensions are high. People uh, will wear opposing sports jerseys. Like if I see a Philadelphia, not, eh, better pick a better one. Let's see, what team do I truly despise? New Orleans Saints. Uh, by the way, uh, the player that tried to break Justin Herbert's leg, Dirty player, dirty franchise. If I were to see a New Orleans Saints uh, hat, I would scowl and I might say something, but is my response their responsibility? No, absolutely not. My response would be my responsibility. My ability to be civil is my responsibility, not theirs. So if I were to wear a MAGA hat and you were to freak out, you're the problem, not me. It, it should be that simple. The people's, people's reaction to the hats are their responsibility. People's reaction to rhetoric is their responsibility. And so what this ultimately means is these people, these just brain rotted Democrats and rich white liberals freak out and think that hat's going to incite violence. Okay, that means the person who, is, who sees the hat is inherently violent. I, it's, it's that simple. That means that other person's the problem, not the hat. Okay? It, it should be that simple. But no.
because of the brain rot and because of just the inability to think outside of their own bounds, Democrats and rich white liberals will see something like this and they'll try to shut it down because they think that they're being the truly chivalrous people. They're protecting the innocent and the weak. No, you're not. You're just putting shackles on everything so no, so uh, you can live free in your ivory tower. All right? it, it's, it's like you assume that everyone's a pit bull and it's going to randomly attack a baby at, at, at any moment. Okay? That's not a healthy mentality. And while it's technically correct, because pit bulls are the most violent of dog breeds, it's okay to admit that. What's not okay is to deny that there's a problem. So if you're assuming that everyone is a pit bull, then you have a problem with the way you view people, just at your basic foundation and at your basic worldview and at the basics of your own ideology. This is very telling of Democrats, and, and I'm, this is California, okay? There are only three kinds of Republicans in California. They're either out in Bakersfield making the sweet oil money, they're uh, too rich for their own good out in Orange County, or they're out in the mountains and they're these homeschooled, isolated folks. Uh, which, by the way, Tim Pool's right. I, I get it if you're in California, but get out and vote anyways. I know you're going to lose in California. But the popular vote is important. And so this, this young lady probably is now exposing the greatest uh, champion for homeschooling because her school district deems their students so violent that if they were to see a hat, they would go off the rails. That's what this ideology comes to. It is deep down an attempt to control people, control speech, and all the while to make themselves feel better about themselves. It is absolutely asinine. This girl should not have to put up with this kind of crap. What she does, because it's California, school districts tend to be very, very liberal, and it's because the education system uh, is quite literally designed to prop up a more lip, uh, liberal style. We need to break up our education system. Just uproot it, burn it to the ground, and rebuild. We need more Montessori style of teaching. We need the ability for more classical education. We need the ability to break the Deweyan system and destroy it with a sledgehammer until you can only see the dust that remains. This system doesn't work. It is easily exploited. It's not teaching kids anything. And yes, I get it. There's that great little quip in Tulsa King that going to college is really about just showing up on time and completing basic tasks. Uh-uh. No, no. Education is about teaching. It is about learning. It is about expanding your mind. It is a wonderful world that deserves to be embraced. Instead, it is used to shackle students, and not just in political ways, but in basic educational ways. Our system is quite literally keeping us in chains. It is insane, and it needs to be broken up, and not just for these political reasons. But I bring up these politics in order to, to hopefully one day spark an idea that becomes a movement. All right? Our kids deserve better. We deserve a better deserve better. America deserves a good functioning educational system. And this ain't it. And it's not just because she can't wear a certain hat. No, no. It's because these people are, have been broken by a system that does not work. All right? That's just the sad reality.